So we stopped at Kessel's booth here and I have David and he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the different lighting options that he has. Sure, so Kessel carries a couple of different lines of products. We've got um, anything from a larger light to a smaller light depending on what size tank you have. But really what we're featuring here today is the A360. Um, this is kind of the brainchild of our newest development. Um, it has the latest generation of dense matrix array. And for those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically a small uh, array of LEDs about the size of a dime that our output's around 90 watts. You guys are the only people that put that many LEDs uh, on a, a single chip, right? Yes, I've seen other arrays. Um, they're much bigger, usually, um, where they're different patterns. But um, not only the number of chips and how close they are, but the ability to have different channels and also different wavelengths on each one of those. So we're not limited to having one or two wavelengths on a, on a multi-chip platform, which is why we're one of the only people who has a tunable light that is also a pendant. Most of the pendants that are on the market are, you pick your color and you're stuck with it. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I've noticed that small pinpoint of light creates uh, what I think is probably the closest source to, of light to actual sunlight. We often refer to metal halide as what we're looking for because sure. it has a small pinpoint of light, but I think this actually does even better than, than that, which is unique for LED lighting. Really, that was our original goal, was to try and be a viable replacement for a metal halide. And so, aesthetics were very important. Color mixing is one of the weakest points of LEDs. It's very difficult to look into an LED tank and not see different colors in there, and that's one of the things that we do 100%. Those little so, sparkles of red and yeah, green floating around. Exactly. The other thing is the shimmer, like you mentioned. You know, A lot of times when you see the shimmer from an LED, you can tell because it's nice, but sometimes it's very sporadic. It's really fast and uh, almost like a disco ball. Yeah, that's the effect that they, I think they call it nowadays. Yeah. <laughs> that's what we tag it. Um, but what we did is, our background, by the way, is in optics and lighting. So one of the things we understand is how to manipulate light to create a certain effect, especially when it comes to interface like water and, and lenses and things. So one of the things we did right off the bat was figure out a way to mix the color and create a shimmer that was more natural. And our goal was to at least get it like a metal halide, but we ended up getting it more like when you go diving. If you ever go diving, that's the closest thing that we've seen to what our light looks like. It ends up, uh, if uh, the surface tension on the water is right, it ends up to me like nice little crisp lines that are going across, uh, really similar to what I see when I'm snorkeling. Yeah. What's also kind of cool, what I've seen with these is, uh, the shadowing effects, uh, where there's an actual shadow underneath rocks, yep. you know, and when a fish swims by, you can see its uh, shadow underneath it. It's something you don't see with really any other type of lighting. Yeah, it's difficult to, to get a natural environment in an aquarium in the first place, whether it's lighting or flow or anything like that. But that's one of the things that we really strive to do is make it feel as natural as possible while giving people um, the ability to make it look the way they want. Um, you know, so sunlight, you can't change the color of it, but with our lights, you can. So you can kind of modify that. The shadowing effect is very nice, you know, especially if you have, uh, we have a big customer in the Bay Area who has a very large tank, and he has a lot of SPS, different, different types of coral, some LPS as well, but he loves non-photosynthetic corals too. And so that was his issue was that, you know, he wants to put them in, in darker places, give some contrast to his, his, his uh, is uh, caves and things like that, and that was one of the things I loved about the lights too. It has like a 3D dimension to it, that uh, depth, yes. uh, that you, it's a perception thing that I think is really cool. Can you tell me how you control it a little bit? Sure, so with the, um, the A360, um, the simplest thing I can tell you is that right off the bat you look at it, it's got an input and an output. You have um, a zero to 10 volt, two channel. One channel controls the intensity, and one channel controls the color range. So we make it as simple as possible. Um, you can tune it anywhere from a 10,000K to a 20,000K and even down to an actinic if you want to, everything in between. And no matter which spectrum you choose, um, you're gonna get um, anything, you're gonna get the wavelengths that you need for growth and color of the coral. So you don't have to worry about like you did with metal halide. I need a 10K to grow everything out and then switch over to 20K to make it look good. Um, with our lights, you can tune it to whatever you want and the coral will grow and color up just as well. One of the ways we achieve a full spectrum with our Kessel lights is that we, um, we have a number of different LED chips that are in the array. We mix it very well. But traditionally um, or commercially available phosphors that you would normally get on chips that you buy, whether warm or cool, 
don't provide enough of a curve to cover some of the reds, make the reds pop or the browns in the aquarium. As you can see here on the outside where it's not mixed as well, um, you can see all the different colors, you know, the red, the green, the aqua, everything that's right there um, before it gets mixed up and goes into your aquarium. So the light does have a full spectrum. It doesn't need... I can see the, the different colors there. Yeah. Um, it actually has a little bit of UV too, and if you see the dark ring in between the yellow and the, uh, the blue there, um, that's actually caused by some of the UV light that comes out of it. Oh, excellent. It, it is a true UV. Um, it's a wavelength that we developed, or I, I should say, a wavelength that we produced um, when there wasn't anything commercially available. Now everybody's asking for it, so it's more commercially available. One of the things that I notice here that I haven't seen before is this nice little connector that you have. It really makes it a, a more profile, sharp look for the tank uh, over the standard gooseneck. Sure. This is something that we're hoping to be able to produce in, uh, in volume so we can introduce it into the market. Uh, originally, this was intended just for show use. We wanted to bring the lights up to a level where they were eye level and they looked a little more presentable over the tank so people can see inside. But it's something that's really catching on and I think it will be available. Um, crossing my fingers here. It's <laughs> absolutely more presentable this way. Um, it's not that it looked bad before, but this adds a, a level of polish to it that, that is welcomed in my mind. It gives another probably six or seven inches of length to the gooseneck when you use it. Oh, so that too. So huh? typically when you arch it over, you're, you're back here at this point. With this, it's extended out another six or seven inches. You know, it just adds more a uh, lower profile look to an already low profile light, uh, really. So, excellent. Yep. Well, thanks for sharing, man. Sure. I appreciate it. All right, thanks.